Now, moving forward, right? I just wanted to talk about uh, the talk about uh, how fast, right? Can you actually do the computation? Because, right? I mean, it looks like when I do an f of k l, right? So, if you imagine, uh, if you if you think of f of k l, so computing a two D DFT, right? Computing to computing a two D DFT. Right, so if you if you look at it, so we have like you know if you look at the summation part, right? F of k l, it involves a double sum, of course, maybe one by n, let's say, right? Double sum, and then f of m n, e raised to minus j, two pi by n, m k plus n l. If it is rectangular, of course, it'll change a little bit. Okay, but uh, okay, we'll just stick to something simple. Now the point is right. This 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 inner sum itself involves right uh, n square n square arithmetic operations, right? Because you have you got to you have got to you know do this multiplication and there is a, you know there's so many additions and all that. And then k and l are also right numbers that are going to change from if you want to compute the to whole two D DFT. K and l also has to be computed for every every value of k and l, right? F has to be computed for every every value of k and l. So, which means that which means that you are looking at something like order is n power four. Okay, if you do a, just like you know one D DFT, if you do a brute force one D DFT, it is order n square. Okay, but here because it's a, you know two D DFT, it looks like right. You may have to you may have to do something like order n power four. But then what you can uh, what you can show is because of the separability property, right? That uh, that is inherent. Uh, you know in uh, this one two D DFT. So that kind of brings it down. Okay, it doesn't have to be order n power four. And then on top of that, right, that separability itself can be used, uh, you know, in the sense that because we know that a fast Fourier transform exists for 1D, okay, and the fact that, right, this you know, uh, this notion of separability is anyway there when you compute a 2D, so these two can be say, clubbed in order to be able to able to really compute a 2D DFT very fast, okay. Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it is uh, in a computation wise, of course, uh, you know, it's a kind of little higher than a 1D DFT, but it's certainly not like. You know, you know, it's not like you, know, you need order n power four and all that. Okay, in order to compute that, right? So, in order to show that, okay, what, uh, right? What I'll do. So, right, this is called a row column decomposition or a column row decomposition. Okay, row column, or you can even interchange the two, or column row depends upon how you write it. Column row decomposition, and by the way, it does not, uh, you know, does not, uh, does not only for a DFT. Okay. In fact, all the transforms that we have that uh, now that we okay we have only talked about DFT now, but in fact even the other transforms are all are all separable. Okay, so the very equation AU A transpose right captures that captures the fact that there is separability and uh, therefore uh, this decomposition is not unique to DFT alone. Okay, so these fast algorithms uh, you can and and the fact that row column decomposition right can be used right is uh, is something that you can exploit. Huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. No, no, no. By separable, right? What we are saying is, I'll show now. Okay. While we do it, you will realize that it's not like they're independent. Okay. No. Row column, column row decomposition. Uh, okay. Now, what this means is the following. Okay, suppose, suppose I ignore this one by n and all right. I don't want to carry this baggage, but but then you should always remember that if it is unitary, then that one by n should be there. Okay. Now, suppose we look at f of uh, what is that? F of uh, okay, f of k l. Okay, suppose we go with f of k l, uh, and then right, we have let's say I mean so. Okay, suppose suppose I suppose I take uh, I take you know suppose I split this sum and then bring in terms right that uh, that involve only m outside then it's like e power minus j two pi by n m k right this is only this need not be sitting inside the sum over n so then inside I get f of m comma n e raised to minus j uh, two pi by n into n into l. Correct. So, if you look at your f of f of m comma n, so we are right. Our notion of m is this. Our notion of n is this. Correct. So, here is our f of m n image. Right. So, if you so if you if you, if you just if you just examine, okay, if you examine this right inner sum, 
okay, if I if I kind of freeze my m, okay, for a certain m, if you if you if you if you look at this inner sum, right, it looks like if you freeze an m, right, and and if you run uh, if you run your, if your index runs along n, then it then it kind of it looks like you're looking at the looking at the mth row of this image, right? If you fix m and then let the sum run over n, it looks like you're looking at this kind of a one d one d row, right? this row, right, which is like, which is like it's like a one d sequence, right? Now, which then means that means that right, if you if if you, if you look at if you look at an operation like this, what it amounts to saying is that you can look upon this as computing one d DFTs, right, of all the rows of f, right? Because your 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 m is varying, no? So this is this is really a one d sort of a sort of a DFT operation, and if you think that. And if, the, if you think that right, this takes order order say n square, if you do a kind of a brute force thing, and that's a, if you use a fast Fourier transform, it's less than that. But suppose you do a brute force thing, right? Then it's like order n square, right? For uh, for let's say for let's say one DFT, right? So then what it means is now okay now suppose we go all the way down, right? So so we compute all of this, and suppose we we create a new array now. Let me call this as some intermediate array, okay? F i. Uh, now this f i right is going to be okay. Now if you look, if you look at this guy right, this will be a function of uh, m and uh, l. Correct, function of m and l. So m this way and l this way. Okay, so this inner guy right. If I evaluate because I'm summing it over n, no, so it will be some some lattice right, which will uh, some let's say intermediate array f i. Which will be a function of uh, okay, so look upon us as m, and then you have like f i of m comma l e power minus j two pi by n m k. Okay. Now, now, uh, now, right? What you can see is if you freeze l now. Because the sum is running over m, right? then this looks like you know if you freeze L, then it looks like for all m, right? You are trying to compute uh, compute this quantity, which then means that right? You are kind of looking at the looking at uh, computing the DFT of the columns of F i. It's not really independent, right? It is acting on the on the values computed with respect to the rows now, and now on this new array, right? I mean you can think of either transposing it or you can just let's look upon that as the columns or so. It's like you did initially the rows, you did a computation which is the intermediate array, and now you are doing the columns of this array. These can these numbers can be complex now. Yes, phi can be complex, right? It can have complex entries, and even though you may have started with f, that is real, but having taken a one D DFT, all those entries could have become complex for all we know. Now, now what you are doing is this is like this is like doing one D DFT again, okay? You know, along along each column. Okay, so what this is saying is like you know if I did order uh, you know n square. Brute force. Now it looks like I have to do uh, n DFTs here, correct, for all the rows, and then I have to do another n DFTs here for all the columns. Okay, that, that um, if I do that, then I'm done. No, I'll get my f of k comma l. So which means that I have to do like you know two n DFTs, one d DFTs, right? Which is why, which is why if uh, and this is happening, okay, because uh, because of this separability, right? I split that, correct? Because that was because this complex exponential is separable, and therefore that's why I could pull that m out, right? Because or you could have done the other way; you could have pulled n out, and then then it would it would become column row. Okay, that's why I wrote this as row column or column row. And uh, the point is, right? So so which is why you can you can you can see that it will require order n cube now because you've got like two n one d DFTs, right? So your order of com complexity, if you just do it brute force, but if you did brute force, full brute force, f of k comma l, that would be an order n power four. But if you use the separability, uh, you know, property, then it reduces to order n cube, which also means that now if I had a fast Fourier transform, right, one d DFT fast Fourier transform, uh, right, one d, one d DFT. If you do a fast Fourier transform, right, FFT, if you compute using a using an FFT, then uh, then that is. What what is what is this, what is this order, order complexity n log n to the base two, right? Now you can imagine that you've got like a series two n number of them, that right, because of the separability, and therefore, uh, therefore if you if you look at a two D fast Fourier transform, right, that will have order 
n square log n to the base 2. That will be the that will be the level of complexity. So, which is why if you try you know if I give you a 1024 by 1024 image and ask you to do some brute force uh, uh, DFT computation right you will be sunk. Okay? Whereas, whereas you know if you, if you just run it uh, through uh, 1D FFTs and try to compute it right. We will, I mean that is the only way to do it. I mean, nobody will do a brute force calculation. But uh, yeah, but then what I wanted uh, wanted you to know is that uh, this kind of a decomposition is in fact embedded in that you know in that uh, this is not this is not surprising right in the sense that if you look at your your that equation okay that we had right when we said v can be written as a u a transpose when you come from uh, when you come from 1 uh, right 1 d to actually a 2 d case here itself you can actually interpret it uh, correct I mean in the sense that think about this a u for example okay it's like it's like you know it's like uh, it's like you're uh, you're you're operating so a is your d think of a as your dft matrix so it is acting on on each of these columns and giving you let's say some is intermediate image uh, whatever array ui now what you got is ui a transpose this you can write as a ui transpose the whole transpose correct you this is correct no ui a right a ui transpose the whole transpose so now a is acting on now the now this is a transpose of ui that means well, right which is the same as column and then row correct it's not a ui right it's a ui transpose and then again of course you have to try and do a transpose because you have to come back to the original v and u should map should map the right way no k comma l should be along like m n right variation along m should capture be captured along k and variation along n should be captured along l otherwise your interpretation will be ulta right so that is why that is why right, this transpose on top will take care of that or you can also look at it this way you know think about uh, ua transpose as so what do you <laughs> what will you write it as u transpose transpose right, that is also fine no there's also ua transpose so now you look at it right so so so, so you look at uh, look at au transpose okay this gives you an intermediate ui okay and and then and then and then and then right when you kind of say you know take the transpose and then you act you know a on that right this is not kind of same result right so so this can be interpreted either either through uh, so so this separability and this notion of uh, row column decomposition or a column row decomposition right is kind of you know right inherently there okay even the, even in the way we wrote uh, we wrote as aua transpose but for DFT right I just wanted to show it explicitly but then from now on we won't show it explicitly for every transform we just know that right this uh, very very the, the very manner in which we write a 2D transform unitary transform separable cases itself right it will lend itself to this kind of a uh, to this kind of a fast sort of you know uh, this one a computation okay and uh, see most of the properties and all right i don't want to right we don't want to spend all our time uh, talking about dft and all so i'm just going to going to limit myself to just one property which might be of interest which is actually a rotation property okay because uh, rest of it and all is very similar to what you have in 1d and uh, the goal of doing the unitary transforms is not to just look at uh, dft or something okay so i'll just run through this rotation property what do you think will happen what do you think should happen See if I if I have an image, uh, you know, f of m comma n, right, and then, you know, it has some let's say Fourier transform, and if I kind of rotate this image, uh, what do you think might happen to the Fourier transform of the rotated image? So ideally, what I mean, you would think that the transform should also should also probably undergo the same angle of rotation. Okay, when you you know rotate an image, the Fourier transform, ideally, you would think that it should also it should also probably rotate, right? Is it not? Uh, both phase and magnitude. In fact, the Fourier transform itself should rotate. In which case, it means that the magnitude spectrum would also have rotated. The phase spectrum would also have rotated. Okay. This uh, okay, right? So to show this, okay, we'll just uh, we'll just show this today. So imagine that uh, right that we have f of k comma l. Mm. Let me see if I missed anything. Uh, so let us see, right? So if you have a uh, f of k comma l and again this 1 by n all right I am not writing okay but it is there. So, summation m n okay going from 0 to n minus 1 and then you have got f of m comma n to e raise to minus j 2 pi by n m k plus n l okay. 
Now let uh, let us write this vector k to be k comma l. So so this k comma l, right? I would uh, just to just to just to simplify matters, and let me write some m subscript to be equal to m comma n. Okay, so which then means that I can write this as f k, okay, where this k represents that index k comma l, the summation m n f of m e raised to minus j 2 pi by n. Now, I can write this as m transpose k because this is m k plus n l right. So, I can write this as m transpose k. Now, if you look at what will happen if I multiply by r and of course, this is of course, you know a rotation matrix. So, it could be like a cos sin minus sin cos or cos minus sin sin cos right one of the two. So, on on right on the plane right you are trying to say rotate this. So, if you do this right this will turn out to be summation m n f of m e raise to minus j 2 pi by n m transpose and I have to replace k by r k. I replace replace on the left k by r k or right I will replace k by r k. This is equal to summation over m n f of m e raise to minus j um, 2 pi by n um, r transpose m the whole transpose uh, m transpose r right k. Right. I will just rewrite it like that for for of course, you know for a reason. Now, let uh, let us let us say let uh, what is that what do you have here r transpose m right. So, let some p be equal to r transpose m right on the on the same grid ok. Then clearly m is of course, r transpose inverse p and I can talk about the inverse because this is a rotation matrix. So, m is r p right r r transpose is identity. So, therefore, you have like f of r k right now it will run over the new sum let us call this as some p q ok run over p q and then f of now m uh, has to be replaced by r p e raised to minus j 2 pi by n and then r transpose m we said this p right. So, p transpose k right. So, so equivalently right. So, this uh, f gets kind of say rotated by by r ok. So, this uh, I do not have a figure to show here, but uh, you know you can see any book and then you know, they will show you they say this one rotated spectrum spectrum right when you have uh, ok for the for the Fourier transform. Now,